Hello and welcome to Rajya Sabha Television. You're watching The Big Picture with me, Frank Rausen Pereira. Mumbai residents need not buy reverse osmosis water purifiers as a study by the Union Consumer Affairs Ministry has found samples of tap water collected from the financial capital compliant with the Indian standards for drinking water. However, other metro cities of Delhi, Kolkata and Chennai failed in almost 10 out of the 11 quality parameters tested by the Bureau of Indian Standards, which is under the AGs of the Consumer Affairs Ministry. Similarly, samples drawn from 17 other state capitals were not as per the prescribed spe specifications for drinking water. Releasing the second phase study, Consumer Affairs Minister Ram Vilas Paswan said, out of 20 state capitals, all the 10 samples of piped water drawn from Mumbai were found to comply with all 11 parameters, while other cities are failing in one or more. In the third phase, samples from the capital cities of northeastern states and from 100 smart cities will be tested and their results are expected by January 15, 2020. On this edition of The Big Picture, we will analyse why so many of our big cities have unsafe drinking water and what is the solution to the problem. Joining me on the programme today are Avinash Mishra, Advisor, Water Resources, Niti Aayog, Professor C.K. Varshne, former Dean School of Environment Sciences, JNU, and Sudhir Krishna, former Secretary, Ministry of Urban Development, Government of India. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on this edition of The Big Picture. Professor, I'd like to begin the program with you. Uh, this is another distinction that the city of Delhi would probably not want to have to its credit, not just uh, the worst air in the country, but also now the worst drinking water in the country is from the national capital. What is the problem really? I think the problem is very simple that uh, it is for the first time uh, that I can remember that uh, such a data has been made public or at least has attempt has been made to test. So first of all that uh, the kind of uh, water testing that is being done is not in public space. So this is for the first time that we have come. Since we have tested and we have found that none of the sample is passing. The reasons are quite obvious that uh, there are n number of sources in the capital which are likely to affect the water quality. First of all, the basic raw water quality is so poor that even if you really purify it and most of the time we are only chlorinating it, which does really doesn't take care of many parameters which are very critically important for drinking water according to the BSI standard of uh, 10, 500, 2012. Now the point is that uh, the dissolved solids cannot be removed by chlorination. It can detoxify to the extent of the living organisms, the bacteria and so on, but it really has very little to do with the uh, dissolved solids with respect to alkalinity and with respect to the other parameters such as toxic metals and so on. And that is the reason that the water quality is questionable, in fact is not fit for drinking purpose. There is another important point that how the samples were collected and how they were tested is also something which can create some kind of a counter claim that the water quality is good as it has been done in case of Delhi. Because as soon as this report came, they were again the issue was raised that no, the water quality is tested and it was found nice. The question is at a consumer level, what is the water quality has never been attempted. And this is for the first time that the water quality samples have been drawn from a consumer level. While you can really provide the supply at the distribution side from where wholesale supply goes. And the two things are very different. And the pipes that are really laid down which carry this water are old and they are leaking. And there are all kinds of difficulties which have come. They are expensive and therefore they are not replaced or not adequately even repaired. In fact, the problems are not even identified properly unless there is some major breakdown. So the question is that when you have a rationed water supply, a kind of negative vacuum gets created and the material which is outside and wherever leaks are, are really pulled into the water pipe system. And that is one such reason. I can give you my own example and experience. Right. And this perhaps is the experience of most of the people who live in Delhi. Most of us have to pump water to our water tanks which are on the roof and so on. 
and you will find that every two year or even after every one year we have to get it clean and you find huge amount of sand material are deposited there. Clearly this is not what is expected of a city water supply. So I think there are large number of problems which really play in between to determine the water quality which is supplied and available at the consumer end. And the important aspect is for any city water supply that the consumer end water supply must be ensured. Right. That is where the whole problem is. And this is for the first time it has been revealed very vividly that 11 samples, though they are not as many as one would like, but even then it does indicate the appalling situation that exists with respect to the water. Air problem is already we have. So I think the citizens of Delhi are really have no choice but to really consume this water because there is no other water supply. Right. In fact, the groundwater or the bore water quality is still very, very doubtful and sure. there's a lots of problem. Sure. All right. That having been said, uh, uh, Mr. Mishra, you know, uh, when Professor Vashne says it, he's, that it is probably for the first time that he's seeing something like this coming out in the domain. He's been around for a long time now. So it's sad that it's only now that it is really coming out. But kudos to the government and others to really come out with some with a report like this. But it also paints a sorry picture, isn't it? I mean, for the first time, we have a Jal Shakti ministry now. So we are moving in the right direction as far as water is concerned. The government has a good plan of ensuring, uh, you know, water in every tap by 2022, drinking portable, good portable water. But we have a long way to go. See, now we require the database decision support system. It should be there because we should. Uh, why actually uh, uh, these samples were not tested long back? Uh, in one of the report of the Niti Ayo, Composite Water Management Index, we said that India ranked 120th out of 122 uh, countries in the world. So, means uh, the quality of uh, drinking water is not up to the mark and we do require such types of uh, the chemical, uh, biological and virological analysis on our drinking water samples. Is, uh, it is already we know that the uh, the water which uh, the Delhi government with all supports providing is a high, hardly 986 million gallon per day as, as compared to the consumption of 1134 MGD. So there is a uh, there is a mix the the, uh, the various housing society various residential complexes they are mixing the ground water uh, along with the uh, surface water whatever is being provided thereafter the quality of water surface water treatment that is also not up to the mark. If it is up to the mark, then why the any sort of contaminant should uh, really get into it and should flow into it. And similarly, the pipelines are not being maintained because you see everything is uh, everything is interlinked. If I am supplying the free water, then certainly I will not incur that part, uh, that expenditure which I am supposed to do on the maintenance part. And when there won't be any maintenance, there is every chance of those pipelines getting leaked and getting the sewer water or getting the adjoining water because of the negative pressure to get uh, into the pipeline and then the contamination will prevail. So, there should be a clear cut decision support system and the uh, the water quality which is uh, really generating something around 70 percent of the diseases water bound diseases uh, in the country because of the quality of water it should be it should be done in rather more seriously and it is a very serious uh, fact that uh, even the the foreigners those who are residing in delhi they are just actually um, conflicting with their health parameters, with their health standards by consuming this sort of water, it should be really avoided okay. and it All should be a frequent testing. Okay, there should be frequent testing and we should ensure that every household gets good clean water is what you are suggesting. Alright, let me go across to Mr. Sudhir Krishna. Now, you know, Mr. Krishna, on the other side of the spectrum, you have Mumbai, which has passed all the 10 samples have passed, you know, the 11 parameters that were set aside as far as water testing is concerned. What is it that uh, Mumbai is doing right? Is it because it's in the western part of the country? Is the water different there? I mean, are, are the authorities doing their job? What is different about Mumbai? Well, I would, I would not be able to give any special credit to the city of Mumbai because uh, out of 20 capital surveys, tested, only Mumbai seems to have passed the test. So, I don't know, that's true. 
just about 10 samples, sorry, 11 samples taken. So I, but I do not go into the debate whether the sampling methodology was good or not good. Definitely it is not good. I mean, in a large, large state uh, city like Delhi, we had one and a half crore people live and some 10 or 11 samples to each other. But that apart, it is a good thing that the issue has been highlighted. Because all these years, the efforts of the government was on making water available. The quality of water was, has become secondary so far. But it is time now, now that we have got almost enough water in most cities now, you know, thanks to the GNNURM and thanks to the efforts on recycling of wastewater, the availability of fresh water has become reasonably good in most cities. So now we have to focus on the quality issue. And that is a little more complex issue because water supply in more and more cities are being given to a single body like gel board. Young Nigam or Young Board, Water Boards are there. And you know, they are they, their organization has monolithic organization. They are not having people's representative like you know, like municipal corporation and so on. They are where with all infrastructure is also administrative infrastructure is not attuned or not enough to go into networking of what is the last point. As a result, they are focused more on the bulk supply point. And you know, the issue is a little more complex because bulk supply goes into a housing society reservoir, ground level reservoir, mm -hmm. then it goes to the overhead tanks of the of the multi-story building, and from there it comes to the household. So the water board is not able to manage what is happening in the underground uh, reservoir or sometimes we call in the in the layout, and from there what happens in the overhead tanks, whether overhead tanks are set properly, whether they are covered properly whether they are cleaned regularly, it is not the job of the water board. So this matter has got a more intricate management issue involved, where we have to have involvement on the one, of course, the water board is very important, but the municipality has to be involved, the sure. resident welfare associations have to be involved, and ultimately citizens have to be involved. Okay, so Mr. Krishna, what you're suggesting, your, your line seems to be unclear at the moment. We'll try and reconnect with you and get a clearer line. But you're trying to suggest that there should be better management really at all levels so as to ensure that portable drinking water is supplied or good drinking water is supplied to everyone as a whole. So, Professor, let me bring you into the picture now. You know, uh, when we talk about now that we know that, you know, most of our cities don't really have good clean drinking water coming out of the taps and that's why you see people you know having filters at home aqua guards uh, ro purifiers and so on and so forth how much do they really help that is point number one and secondly whose prerogative is it to supply good clean drinking water you see there are a number of things that we have to look very carefully first of all that there is no binding and there is no commitment with respect to the bsi standard supply of water so i think we have to make it mandatory that all municipalities and all water supply bodies must really conform to the bsi standard that's number one we have to make it mandatory and once it becomes mandatory then i think some kind of accountability can be and they can be made responsible otherwise it is a very loose loose situation the second point is that it's a very serious matter that water must be provided because it affects the mental health, the development and so on and so forth. And on a large scale and all the metropolitan cities that we are talking about, if the water quality is not there, it's a great health risk that we are involving in. And at the same time, it is very important that the water quality must be improved. You know, the sustainable development goal, one of the objectives is to really provide safe drinking water. And it's also related to the health. So I think we are not going to attain that by 2030, which is our target date. And therefore, from all points of view, from the point of view of a tourist inflow, from the points of view of our saving resources, because these water bottles are only there because the water quality is not good. And it has resulted into another kind of a problem of plastic pollution and single use plastic. So you can see that how the problems get multiplied. People are installing ROs and ROs are again very, very difficult to really accept as the alternative for good quality water because they are totally deprived of any nutrients which are required and which are essential component of a drinking water. And most of the RO water is hungry of metallic uh, alkali ions such as calcium, magnesium and so on. So once you drink, they really rob your body of the calcium from your bones and other system. 
Of course, it gets replenished because what we are eating also supply them. But often time, the balance is negative in many situations. So I think it is a very serious. Plus, it really wastes a lot of water because one liter requires many liters of water before reverse osmosis takes place. Nor we need it. We need water which has got right amount of metals, right amount of ions of the required kind of uh, calcium, magnesium and so on. So I think that a proper water is one where these minerals are available and you know the mineral waters are sold in bottles are far expensive which come from a distant area from the nature's watershed and so on. Bombay water is good for two reasons that I can now <laughs> speculate. One is that most of the Bombay water supply is a rainfall water. And rainfall water is relatively pure than most of the water supply that other cities have, which is a mix of the surface water as well as of the ground water. Mm. And ground waters are getting into a very serious situation because of the solid waste dump that we have all over the place, irresponsible disposal of industrial waste, as well as sewerage and so on and so forth. Most of the unauthorized colonies are another source which really contribute to this very significantly. So the question is that many places the water supply pipe as well as the sewerage system are running side, side by, by side. side. Mm. And that is the reason that you will find that this kind of a situation. And it is a very likely and I think it is a very potential danger for an epidemic to break out. And Delhi is famous for all kinds of these hepatitis and so on which during the summer escalates very significantly. Sure. So I think having this history and then having this quality of water is a very serious alarm and the writing is on the wall and we should be very careful and we should do everything possible to remedy the situation and to attend to this kind of a problem. The data should be made public so that people get sensitized. Both those who take decision and those who supply are made responsible and I think this is the only way that we can correct our water supply which is so vital for a healthy population. Okay, accountability needs to fix going forward is what you are suggesting. Mr. Mishra, uh, what other solutions do you see as far as ensuring clean drinking water to every household? The now that we know that the problem is, as, the problem persists. As we know that uh, as per the constitution, water is a state subject. So the state governments must be uh, responsible. And finally, the urban local bodies, those are there, they should take this in a very uh, decisive manner and there should be fixing of responsibility. And again, the long distance travel of supplying the water should be avoided. It should be localized. The treatment plant should also be localized. So the, after the treatment, when the water is being supplied, there is a less chances of getting this contaminated and there should be proper maintenance. And for that, whatever the uh, pricing of uh, water comes, it should be properly actually recovered. Instead of people buying the bottled water or the water from other sources on a higher prices, it is better to provide them the, uh, the, uh, the urban local bodies water or the proper water um, by the state government because it is a state responsibility in a proper treated manner. So the long distance transfer of the water should be avoided. Whenever there is a need for mixing it with the groundwater, there should be a proper uh, visual on it and there should be proper testing that uh, which is the responsible because as uh, I understand from the various report, even arsenic is found and which is very severe, this is cancerous. So this should be avoided, actually it should be immediately avoided and um, the, instead of uh, um, finding the uh, the ways that it may not be my responsibility, it would be the, their responsibility or the sample was not taken properly. We should not really waste our time in, in these activities. We should rather be concerned about the quality of water and this sort of the collection of the water and then publishing the report sh should be made almost uh, um, biannually, if not annually. Uh, so it should come in the public domain and the uh, sensitivity should be there on all the corners by the consumers, by the service providers and by the government that in what quality of water they are providing. Alright, stop passing the buck, take responsibility and take action is what you are suggesting. That is the best way forward really as far as tackling this particular issue is concerned. Mr. Krishna, coming back to you now, you know, uh, 
Uh, if you go to the villages, you see people drinking water directly from the taps. You know, in my ancestral home in Chikmagalore, in a small hamlet uh, in Chikmagalore, you know, we drink water directly from the tap. And that's something that we've been doing from, from a long, long time. But somehow when this water eventually reaches the city, there is so much of contamination that takes place. What is the biggest reason? What is the biggest problem for this? Actually, I also, I also work in Chikmagalore. My service began from Chikmagalore only. And uh, I'm happy to mention about it. But I should say that it is not safe to drink water from you know, any sort of rural, rural areas also. I think those, those days are gone when we used to think that stream water and any water coming from rural areas like things and whatever comes in urban area is like doubt. So. so I think the issue is complex. In rural areas also, the water is often being supplied through uh, both ways. Underground water is being used for supplying rural areas also in many parts of the country. And surface water is like coming from rivers and uh, ponds, nothing is safe. Underground water is very rich in minerals, much more than required arsenic, iron, chloride, you know, chloride, and so on. So it's not, not safe at all. The sample has come only from cities. See, samples should come from rural areas also. And the challenge will be equal, if not more, in the rural areas. There are not much of treatment plants in the rural areas. Having said that, I would like to just reiterate, because earlier probably my voice was not very audible, that in the urban areas, the management of water requires to be revisited. So far, we focus only on supplying quantity of water, 135 liters or whatever, whatever norm we focused on that. The quality of water was not given a serious attention. Why it is right. not happening? You know, Mr. Krishna, unfortunately, your voice is still not very clear despite trying to fix that line. You know, there is, there is uh, some kind of a fluctuation in your voice. Let me go across to the other speakers in the meantime. So, uh, Professor Vashni, going forward, what immediate measures need to be taken, say, in the next six months to one year? And what long-term measures need to be taken, like you're talking about the goal of 2030? What needs to be done in the long run so that we try and achieve some of these goals as well? I think there are a number of things that need to be done. Number one is that we should really do this kind of a monitoring of water quality more frequently. And we should be publicly sharing this data widely so that the concerned people are able to really test even the raw water which they are really drawing for supplying. And secondly, our treatment plant have to be upgraded because it's a new kind of a problem that we have. Earlier, you know, killing the bacterial infection was a primary concern. Mm. But since industrial waste, effluents and all these are discharged in a very liberal way to most of our water sources, primary water sources, and therefore the dissolved, ox the d dissolved solids content has increased. And under this circumstances, we have to really refine our water more adequately for which new technology is needed, such as, uh, I should say, the resins and the exchanges and ion exchange and so on, depending upon the supply of the original water. Correct. So I think the testing is important. Sorry to cut you short, uh, yeah. Professor, but just boiling of water is no longer enough. Boiling of water is good as long as we want them free from bacterial contamination. But to get rid of the dissolved solids, it is not very good. For that, you require additional chemical treatment to remove these salts. And I think it is here that we have to think very carefully that what kind of uh, monitoring of the water refining system is being done. There is no monitoring on that. We do not know that what is their efficiency, day-to-day -day efficiency. And all these things are very important to know. And when we know this, then I think it will be easy for us to fix the long term and think of long term solution. But at present, it is very important that the water supply from the supply side has to be very carefully monitored, both at that end as well as to find out that at which point in the supply line the contamination is occurring. And therefore, we should really attend to that so that we minimize. But the long-term solution is that the water has to be treated with a lot of hygiene, which is not there. I don't see people are wearing any gloves or anything of that kind or any protective gear. So I think at each step, there is a big potential of getting it polluted. 
most of the repairers who come in our homes and all the municipal corporation workers, I mean, they simply dug a well or dug the soil and fix the fault where plenty of water goes and there is a pool of water which is also partly getting into the main line. And I think every day, one or the other place, they are digging. So I think it's a very liberal source of making contribution in terms of pollution to the main supply of water. Okay, all right. And uh, uh, Mr. Mishra, close the show for us with your concluding remark with the best way forward. Actually, the firstly, the report should be frequently published. And we should see certain contaminants like biological contamination, like the con contamination of arsenic and fluoride, which is such that we should be seriously be avoided. And we should see where from it gets originated and that particular origin uh, should be addressed. It should not be like that, okay, we will treat and it will happen because these are the things where the treatment is not feasible. And other thing is this, our water treatment plants, they, uh, they certainly require the maintenance, refurbishing and they are of uh, the, the, the quite old technology. They should again be uh, remodeled and new technology should be brought in. And the proper maintenance fund should be there and there should be proper sensitization along with fixing of the responsibility. Because suppose if I am here, I have been allocated to treat the water and to supply the water, then if my water is not pure, then the responsibility must lie to me. I am realizing the salary out of it, so I should be held responsible. Now the time is there that it should be data-based support system and data-based fixing the responsibility. This is very much needed, I think. Okay, all right. On that note then, we'll call it a wrap on this edition of The Big Picture. Thank you to my guests for joining me on the program and putting things into perspective for us. What's coming out of this discussion is that this particular issue is a serious issue and it needs to be addressed immediately so that we do not face any long-term issues or long-term problems. No more quick fixes. We need to go to the root of the problem and ensure that it is cut or stopped right in the bud itself. New technology needs to be used. The people also need to be sensitized about clean drinking water. And most importantly, accountability needs to be fixed going forward so that we know that no one is doing something wrong. With that, it's a wrap on this edition of The Big Picture. See you again next time.